Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful, sunny Friday here in Michigan, and uh, this is my first video, and I wanted to take this time to introduce myself and tell you a little bit about my story. My name is Stephanie Weiss, and I'm a naturopathic practitioner and health coach. Um, I am also a 13-year thyroid cancer survivor, and uh, I did three rounds of radioactive iodine that all failed over a five-year period. And it was at that point that I decided that maybe the conventional way of doing things wasn't exactly the way that I should take any further. Um, I actually was fearing for my life at that point. So I sought the help of a holistic doctor on the east side of Michigan. His name was Dr. David Brownstein. And uh, through his help, my life was changed forever. And um, one of the things that we used was a therapy called the iodine therapy, which has gained momentum uh, amazingly since I found out about it in 2006. And um, I now run a Yahoo group that is just called Iodine, and we have close to 7,500 members there that are uh, investigating the protocol for various reasons, like uh, fibrocystic breast disease, PCOS, um, cancer protocols, uh, prostate issues for men. Uh, hormone imbalances. It's just an amazing substance that was used for over a hundred years. And in my case, it helped me to heal naturally from thyroid cancer. Now, I don't want to give you the impression that iodine was the cure-all because I do run into people who think that iodine is going to be the saving grace. And uh, they want to know how much did you take and what did you do? And um, and I want you to understand that, that not one nutrient can ever heal the body completely. The body needs a whole symphony of things. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, so one of the things that I did do along with taking iodine was to make sure that my magnesium levels, my vitamin C levels, selenium, um, and other hormones that uh, need to be all in balance in the body were all there and working and functioning correctly. So we worked on that. We ran labs to figure out where, I, uh, where my status was in that respect. And then I took nutritional supplements to balance that out. Another key piece of the puzzle that um, I believe was important to my success was to look at my teeth. And uh, no one had ever told me that your teeth were important. And I had 11 mercury amalgam fillings. And um, through the process, I worked with a holistic doctor, uh, actually holistic dentist, that had been trained in Hal Huggins removal protocol. And uh, he was successful in removing the 11 amalgam fillings safely. And, uh, and he also pulled a root canal tooth. And I know there's some debate as to whether or not this is a real issue, but for me, when we removed it, there was black sludge underneath that tooth. So uh, it was a good thing that we had that pulled, and I believe that that helped my immune system to get stronger. After I had those removed, I went through chelation process, and uh, I'm always asked, what did you do, what did you do? For me personally, what we did was an oral chelation with DMSA, and um, a product called uh, Mercurius Viv, it was a homeopathic. I did oregano, I did chloroclear from Metagenics, I did um, chlorella from Biotics, and um, those were the main things that I worked on. And I chelated for approximately a year and a half, and I stopped when I stopped having severe fatigue. And that was how I knew that, um, that I was probably okay. Do I think that I probably have some heavy metal issues? Probably. Um, I think it's hard to avoid it in our culture today. It's in our environment in a lot of areas. So I think it's important for us to be conscious of detoxing our body um, no matter what our health condition is. So um, let's backtrack to when I was diagnosed. Um, I was diagnosed with papillary thyroid cancer in 2000. My son was just four months old. I had a baby in November of 1999. Prior to that, in March of 99, my OBGYN was doing um, an annual physical, and he said, you know, your thyroid's kind of swollen. And he never recommended that I do anything. And um, looking back on that now, I kind of am curious or, you know, frustrated that doctors don't really take this seriously because your thyroid gland is something that's very, very important to your body. It runs your entire metabolic system and is... Um, kind of the, the powerhouse of your body. So when you're low, everything else suffers. And I did. I suffered from asthma. Um, I was diagnosed with adult onset asthma. I had weight issues and um, I struggled with fatigue. And 
then it moved into um, anxiety and um, high levels of frustration, like he could set me off really easily. And that was just the adrenals now getting fatigued because the thyroid was compromised. So um, I was pregnant and that drew upon my thyroid, or I'm sorry, that drew upon my, yeah, my thyroid and my adrenals. And um, they struggled through the pregnancy because the baby takes what he needs. And um, when I got done, then I noticed now looking back, on my delivery pictures that there is this massive lump on the side of my neck and nobody noticed it. So I uh, went to another doctor for some other issues and he did a neck check and said, hey, did you know you have a lump on your thyroid? And this was December, right after my son had been born. I said, no, but I'll have my, my uh, OBGYN check it out when I go for my checkup. Well, that turned into an ultrasound that turned into a nuclear med scan that turned into a fine needle biopsy in February of the following year. And at that point, they came back with a result of the abnormal follicular cells. Now, that wasn't a cancer diagnosis, but um, the way that allopathic medicine works is that whenever there's a doubt, you take it out. So that was what was re recommended to me was that um, let's just go for surgery. Let's remove it just to be sure. Well. I had a new baby. I was scared out of my mind. And um, I was willing to do anything that the doctors told me in order to protect my health. I didn't look online. And actually, the internet wasn't what it is today. So I didn't have the resources that I do now. So in March of 2000, I went in for a partial thyroidectomy. And when I came out, my doctor said to me, it looked really bad. So we took three quarters of it out. And uh, I was like, okay, and he said, you'll just take a little pill, and everything will be great. Don't worry about it. Okay. So I went on my merry way, and when I returned for my stitches to be removed, um, the doctor said to me, I'm sorry. I said, you're sorry. He said, I'm sorry, I didn't know. It was papillary thyroid cancer. And I sat there stunned. I looked at the car seat on the floor with my son in and I thought, I just heard those words. You have cancer. And he said, aren't you going to say anything? And I said, I don't know what to say. I was told it was nothing. It was nothing. It was nothing. And then all of a sudden it was something. And I remember leaving the office, getting into my car, and crying. I called. I paid to my husband, and then I called my girlfriend. And I went to her house. And thank goodness for her, because they... Her mom and her sister were there, and all three of them supported me through my tears and my fears, and uh, my husband was great, too, because when he got home from work, he said, don't worry, we'll get through this. But little did I know that this would turn into five to six years of uh, thyroid hell, and um, I, had a, I had to return for another surgery. They removed the rest of my thyroid gland. And then at the end of May, I went in for radioactive iodine. It was 105 millicuries, and uh, they sent me home. I had a six-month-old baby, and they sent me home. The precautions were flushed twice after going. Um, use different utensils, and keep your linen separate when washing, and stay away from your child for 10 days. Um, I tell you what. If any of you had to do this around children, it's going to freak you out because it's radiation. You're radioactive. You've got children. You worry about your kids. You worry about your family. And I didn't know that it affects your pets, too. I had a cat that slept on the bed with me. Um, so I think they're a little bit, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, nonchalant, maybe, about this whole thing. Uh, Years and years ago, when people went through radioactive iodine, they were put in a hospital room in isolation. Anything that came into the room didn't go out. And um, now we've come to the point where we go to a hospital, we take a pill, and we come home. And we're close to our family and our pets, and, um, and really, we're exposing everybody. So I got through that. It felt like a really bad case of the flu. Thank goodness for 
the internet because I was online and, you know, chatting with other women who had gone through the same procedures on a um, iVillage group that was for thyroid cancer. And they kind of helped me through a lot of the issues and gave me the support that I needed. And um, I thought, okay, good, this is done. I went back to my doctor and he told me, you're done. I don't ever have to see you again. And I thought, oh, that's really strange. I'm done. I had cancer diagnosis and I'm just done. Well, I made an appointment with another doctor in the area who specialized in thyroid conditions. He was an endocrinologist. The first doctor that I saw was an ear, nose, and throat doctor. And uh, he really wasn't skilled in what he did. He didn't really know a lot about thyroid cancer. He used um, a doctor at the hospital as the person that helped to guide him on what he should do. That should have been clue number one to me that I should have gone for a second opinion. But I didn't. I trusted him. And um, so I saw this next endocrinologist, and he ran some labs. and. He wasn't excited at the fact that my thyroid globulin level was still registering. But after I told him that I'd been taking some thyroid support supplements and hadn't been on a low iodine diet, he said, oh, that's the problem. It didn't work. Well, you don't want to hear those words. You don't want to hear it didn't work after you've just been to hell and back with a radiation treatment. And uh, he said, well, let's just see how it goes. So in December, we ran some tests again. And uh, my thyroid globulin levels had gone up. And he said, you know what, you got to go for more thy or for more radioactive iodine. Well, I wasn't thrilled with this at all. It's now December of 2000. Um, I had had my last treatment in May, and I wasn't looking forward to going off my medication and starting this whole thing all over again. Um, now my son was a year, and you know how active a year one-year-old can be. And uh, when you're hypo, severely hypo, this doesn't work well. Um, I had to quit my job, so I was a stay-at-home mom at this point, and uh, there was really no one that could help me, so I was on my own, and uh, somehow I made it through, and in January of 2001, I was scheduled to have my second radioactive iodine treatment. Now, this doctor was a real piece of work, let me tell you. He, uh, he was not the most compassionate individual, and when I asked him about exposing my son and what precautions, he flippantly said to me, you know, you need to be away from him for six months. And I said, how in the world can I do that? I'm a stay-at-home mom. And he said, oh, just put him in a high chair and throw some food at him. This is what is out there, people. I, I can't even describe to you how frustrating this is. And this is not an isolated incident, I'm sorry to say. I get contacted by people all the time who are so distraught, so distressed at the way that they're being treated like cattle. Like they have no no feelings, no family, no life, and they're just another number, just another treatment protocol um, on that doctor's schedule. And uh, it's very disturbing, quite frankly. So I left that office crying again. Seems like I continued to leave doctor's offices crying. And I uh, went through the protocol as he outlined, and uh, this time I got 150 millicuries, and no, I did not stay away from my son for six months. I stayed away for the 10 days um, because radioactive iodine, the I-131, has a half-life of eight days, so um, every radiation website, <coughs> I'm sorry, um, said that Eight days is the half-life, and uh, ten days is sufficient for children. So that's what I did. Um, and then I, I went on, and uh, I found another doctor, another endocrinologist, because this one was so emotionally cruel that uh, I, I couldn't continue my relationship with him. And the next doctor that I found was nice, and he was actually tolerant of a thyroid globulin level that was around five. So... My level stayed there for many years at that point because I saw him probably around September of 2001. And then um, in April of 2005, um, my husband had lost his job. I was planning to go back to my consulting job, and I went for my five-year checkup. And I was greeted with, your numbers are up again. You need to go off your thyroid medicine. And we need to schedule radioactive iodine for the third time. Well, I was really frustrated because I'd been working with a naturopathic doctor in the area. We had been doing 
nutritional um, supplements. We had do we had done liver cleanses. I really felt like I was on the pathway to health. And then this. Um, at this point, I didn't know enough to really intelligently talk to my doctor. Not that he would have listened. I found out because whenever you challenge their way of thinking, um, the walls go up. And uh, that doctor-patient relationship no longer becomes um, an equal exchange. It becomes a dictatorial process. Um, because I said so, this is the best thing, I'm your doctor. And that's all very frustrating to me because I hired him to help me stay well. And I didn't want him telling me what to do. I wanted him to work with me to maintain wellness. And that's not what happened. So. Um, I did go off my medicine. It was April 15, tax day, and uh, I began my descent into hypo health. At this point, I now had two children, um, one who was almost three, and my son was five at this point. And um, again, you know, I used videos to help them uh, entertain them while I would nap on the couch. I, honestly, I don't know how I did it. I, you know, maintained the house. I um, took one to school. I, you know, cooked the, the meals and did the laundry. Um, and I slept. And that was pretty much my life. And I descended into this hypo land very, very quickly. Within about four weeks, I think it was, I had a TSH of about 150. So they decided to move up my radioactive iodine treatment. And um, on May 23rd of 2005, I had my final radioactive iodine treatment. And uh, when the nurse called me and told me when it was scheduled, I asked her how much it was, and she said 250, and I said, why so much? And she said, oh, the doctor wouldn't schedule it unless you needed it. And I said, well, can I talk to him? And she said, no, that's what he wants. Again, that's very disturbing that I can't talk to my doctor. And uh, and she was very, you know, lackadaisical about the whole thing. Like I was going for 10 days to a day spa, to relax and this was no big deal and I knew it was a big deal this is radiation and even though they tell you it goes to only your thyroid cells it goes to every single cell in your body and that that's evidenced by the scans you can see radiation in the colon you can see radiation in the kidney and um, our cells have receptors for iodine and so since it's radiation or radioactive iodine um, you're going to destroy more than just the thyroid cells but yet they'll tell you this is the greatest therapy because it only goes to those thyroid and thyroid cancer cells. Not true. So I didn't know what to do at this point. Um, I didn't want to go through this radiation, but I didn't have any other plan. So because I didn't have another plan, I submitted to the radiation once again. And uh, I remember driving to the hospital and and being very distraught over the whole thing and having to do this again and scared um, that this would be something that would, would ruin my health. Um, I had been talking to other people at this point who had gone through similar things and they were not doing well. And um, I remember thinking a, a scripture that went through my head, I think it's from Peter, that talks about uh, how they will drink poison and it will not harm them. And that just went through my head over and over and over again. And I just prayed that God would protect me from this poison and that it wouldn't harm me. So I went through the, I went to the hospital and I sat in the waiting room and watched the cancer patients be wheeled by in the nuke med department. I took my medication like a good little doobie and I walked out the door and went home. And there I was for 10 days in isolation. And uh, this one would prove to be the worst experience I had ever had. Um, I would vomit for three days. I felt like I had the worst flu I ever had. It was hot. It was cold. It was hot. It was cold. I sweat. Um, and toward the end, I ended up with big sores in my nose. And uh, it was just, it was horrible. But thank goodness, I think that this reaction was actually my body still fighting. And um, so, sorry about that. Um, 
so after that, I worked with my naturopath to uh, build up my body once again. And uh, I consulted with an endocrinologist at the University of Michigan. And she said, I don't know why your levels keep going up. We can do more nuke med scanning, though, to look. I didn't want any part of that. I didn't want any more nuclear medicine. I didn't want any more scanning. I just knew that something had to change. This was May of 2005. I returned in August of 2005 to my endo for a checkup. Yes, that's right. I didn't see my endocrinologist from April until August. Even with that high dose of radiation, he never saw me. There's something wrong with that. So when I saw him in August, my markers were down, and he was encouraged, and so was I. And I was thinking, okay, this is it. This was the last radioactive iodine I could have. I had my maximum lifetime dose of 500 millicuries. Um, any more would really or risk acute myeloid leukemia. And I didn't, I couldn't go there. So this had to be it. This had to be the answer. Um, in January of 2006, I returned from my checkup, and he said. Hmm, your thyroglobulin levels are back up again. So now I think we need to talk about external beam radiation. No way. I wasn't going to go there. By this point, I had learned about desiccated thyroid and uh, how much it had helped other people. I had a natural doctor, um, an integrative medicine doctor, that prescribed it for me in January. I was taking it. And... Uh, when I went to my appointment with my endocrinologist, I asked him, can I have this? Can I have armor? And he said, no. And I said, why not? He said, you don't want to put a peg in your body, do you? Really? Okay, we use pegs for heart valve replacement. And we use pegs for other things, so why wouldn't I want a peg? Especially if it made me feel better, which I knew already that it did. Because just four days on this medication, and my brain fog lift lifted. And I felt so much better. The aching in my joints went away. But he scared me again. When I asked him, why can't I have it? He said, because you have thyroid cancer and your cancer will probably come back. You don't want to hear that. So he gave me a prescription for Cytomel and said, here, take this with your Levaxel. Now I was scared. I didn't want cancer back again. My numbers were already up. So I tried it. And within two days... I got fluid in my ear, and I fell down the stairs. My body reacted so violently to that synthetic medication. It did not want any part of it. I hurt after three days. I quit. I went back to the thyroid, the desiccated thyroid. I thought, you know what? If I have to live like this in pain and with a foggy brain and non-functional, I'd rather risk cancer and feel good, at least on my days left. So I switched. It was during this time that I found, or I remembered, that I had heard about this doctor on the east side of the state. And I called his office, and I said, here's the situation. I've had three runs of radioactive iodine. My cancer markers are back up. I don't want to do external beam radiation because I'm convinced it's going to kill me. I need to come see Dr. Brownstein. He was booked until August. And, uh... I said, okay, can I go on a waiting list? Okay. So I was placed on the waiting list, and uh, we began to pray that something would open up sooner. My church prayed. My family prayed. And two weeks later, on Valentine's Day, I got an appointment to see him. And uh, I consider that God's love gift to me. And uh, I am eternally grateful because it totally changed my life and that of my family and many individuals around me. When I went to visit this doctor, the first thing he said to me was, don't worry, we'll help you to get well. Wellness? That was a new concept to me. Nobody ever talked about wellness. They talked about radiation therapies and drug therapies and controlling cancer. Not wellness, not balance, not how do we get the body to a point where it can fight on its own. 
this was new, but this was what I had been looking for. You see, my father was a chiropractor, so I was raised naturally. I was given no milk was for cows. Um, brown bread was what we ate, raw vegetables, fruits. Um, I didn't have sugar. Cereals were only a special treat for Saturday morning. And this was my foundation. And uh, I was looking for someone to help me do this. I had felt after reading the Maker's Diet book that God had given me everything I needed to heal. I just needed to find someone who would help me do that. And it turned out to be Dr. Brownstein. So by July of 2006, I was 75% better. My markers were coming down. My body was feeling more energetic and balanced. I was no longer having to sleep in the afternoon. I didn't have the panic attacks that I had struggled with as often anymore. Things were really coming together. And finally, by 2009, my markers were completely gone. And uh, I praise God for that because uh, it was something that I worked very, very hard at. And I'll tell you, it wasn't an easy journey. I had to do a lot of things that were difficult um, that took just brute force determination to do. And uh, But I knew that each time I felt a little bit better, that maybe that next one, that next thing that I would do would increase my ability to enjoy an abundant life even more. So I pressed on knowing that the prize had to be at the end. So here I am in 2014 and uh, my last treatment was 2005. I have not done anything that is uh, the normal path. I don't go for scannings anymore. Uh, I will not put radioactive iodine in my body again. And uh, I choose now to eat organic foods detox my body wherever I can. Um, I use Young Living Essential Oils, which are incredible. I, I thought essential oils, those are just good smelling things that you find in perfumes and lotions and, and uh, bathing products, but they are so much more and I've only begun to scratch the surface, I believe, on just what kind of therapeutic properties you can get from those oils. And uh, I intend to take my summer now to learn more about the chemistry of oils and how I can help others to find a better quality of life through those. Um, supplements have been something that I've traditionally used and they are great for balancing um, and nourishing the body, but uh, I think that there are several components that the body needs to heal and I've used many, many of them on my journey. So this is my introduction to who I am and what I've been through and I wanted to take the time to do this and kind of kick off my summer with a new direction. My passion is in teaching. I love to teach others how to do things uh, that improve their health. And I love to share what God has done for me and the things that he has given us that helps us to heal naturally. As we approach our new healthcare system in our country, I think a lot of people are gonna be looking for natural alternatives. Boy, a little tongue tied here but uh, for some natural alternatives that are more cost-effective, um, non-toxic, and uh, that will sustain them with a better life into the future. And I think that that is my passion, to teach people how they can do this and how they can enjoy that abundant life that they were meant to have. So there's, well, this is, uh, this is me and this is where I'm going, so keep an eye open for uh, future videos. And oh, now my dog's getting into the action, so I guess it's time to go. But anyway, uh, check out my uh, my page, and uh, you'll see some future videos, and uh, hopefully we can learn together. Thanks, and have a great afternoon.